Hi, I'm Dr. Sridhar Kalyanasundaram. Welcome to my channel. I hope you're following the series on neurodevelopment. And in this final video, I'll be discussing neurodevelopment follow-up and the different uh, support that we have, multidisciplinary support that we have for this. So all the NICUs that cater to the high-risk baby should have an arrangement in place to follow up and monitor the babies for neurodevelopmental problems. We also should be focused on early intervention program where we support these babies, they channel the development in the right way and the multidisciplinary care should be available and the parents should be educated about the importance of these as well. So what do you mean by an early intervention program? So early and appropriate stimulation should be given when the brain is plastic and adapt. And I told you about the different noxious stimuli that affect the preterm brain in the first video on the series. We have to help channel the development in the right track by focusing on reducing the noxious stimuli and supporting the development with good stimuli. So the neurodevelopment programs, the kangaroo care, music therapy, regular and early interventions like physiotherapy, massage, and occupational therapy in the high-risk babies all help you in this direction. When should we follow up the babies? Obviously, you start the early intervention from the time they are in the NICU and each visit they come for the follow-up is an option to look at their development. So some physicians may need screening tools, but if you are an experienced developmental pediatrician, you don't need the screening tool. You can have your own checklist which you review and looking at the baby's course of development will itself be enough usually to pick up problems. Uh, the Denver Development Screening Tool, which keeps updated, is uh, one of the options. You may have locally refined tools like the Baroda Tool in India or the Trivandrum Developmental Screening Tool and so on. The referral of babies with concern of neurodevelopment follow clinic uh, or you may refer directly to this clinic from the NICU if the babies are clearly defined. Uh, 3, 6, 9 and 12 months and then 6 monthly is a reasonable time pattern but of course the therapists will review more often as per their need and the parents should be involved in the therapy at home in addition to the therapist doing it when they visit the hospital. The multidisciplinary support should be coordinated by a pediatrician or the neurodevelopmental pediatrician. The physiotherapist, occupational therapist are almost universally involved. If there is following difficulty or speech delay, the speech therapist is involved. Uh, pervasive disorders or attention deficit or aggressive behavior may need behavioral therapy or psychologist. Seizures and other significant tone abnormalities may need the neurologist. Sometimes they need Botox injections and so on. The ophthalmologist is involved in most of the preterm babies for the retinopathy follow-up and also they are at high risk of developing squint or myopia. The pediatric surgeon is often involved for tendon release in the babies with stiffness, for monitoring the spine, the orthopedic surgeon and the Achilles tightness may be a problem as well. And other specialists like dietitian uh, may be involved as well. The physiotherapist has a role in assessing the muscle tone and also to assess the impact of the tone on the posture and vice versa. So the posture may affect the tone and the tone may affect the posture as well. So they need to pick up which muscle tone is aggressive, which muscle tone is dominant and then try to do exercises which tone it down. They teach the parents exercises focused according to the developmental stage as well as the specific tone variations in the individual child in that time point. It's very important to recognize that the tone pattern can change in the same child at different time stages so the physiotherapist makes the parent conscious of which postures to avoid which postures to support which muscle groups needs uh, more uh, stimulation and so on and so it's very important that regular follow-up is important and they need to regularly monitor the next stage of the exercise different schools of thought are there for physiotherapy uh, so we have the boba techniques we have the various other techniques so each physiotherapy center would be expert in certain aspects and it may be adapted to the baby's needs. The occupational therapist usually function, functions in tandem with the physiotherapist and the aim is to optimize the functionality. So they modify the positioning the baby lies in or use separate uh, supports like grassroots, working on splints and other devices. For example, if your thumb is uh, bent in a certain way, you can uh, work on equipment that will improve it. You may need orthotic support as well and play-based therapy so you stimulate the child more. So usually you find the occupational therapist and the physiotherapist working together to improve the child's progress and they give ideas to each other 
on how to improve the functionality because ultimately our aim is to make the child as close to normal functionality as possible. The speech therapist has a very important role in the initial stages in assessing and supporting swallowing. There are many babies with delay in the progress uh, or there is a high risk of choking. You can review my video on progressing with suck feeds in the preterm babies. In some of them, you may need the speech therapy support, but majority they improve with time on their own. But where the baby has a neurodevelopmental problem, it's more serious, it takes time. Many of these babies may home, go home on tube feeding and you may need video fluoroscopic studies to see if there is uh, suitability of sucking, swallowing and whether it is safe to suck feed these babies at all. Oral aversion also is often seen in babies with prolonged NICU stay and uh, the babies may refuse the bottle and uh, severe reflex is also one of the reasons why the baby associates a oral sensation with the discomfort or pain and uh, we need the speech therapy support to overcome some of these. Some babies with cerebral palsy have problems with excessive drooling and uh, we may need medications or the speech therapy support for that. And as the child grows older, if there is a developmental delay, you may need to support their language development. We may need hearing review and audiology support, vision review where the squint may be corrected or the refractive error may need glasses, especially in the expreterm babies with treated ROP. Dietitian or nutritional support if, if the baby is having feeding difficulties. Dental review is needed because the oral hygiene is often poor in these childs. If the jaw is stiff, you cannot brush them well, so you need extra attention from the start. Different uh, techniques for physiotherapy and stimulation with occupational therapy. Some of the important logistic difficulties is the cost involved because the insurances may not cover these treatments and uh, there is a significant cost. There is uh, skilled professionals involved in physiotherapy, occupational therapy and all other support and it's expensive. So we need to balance it depending on what's optional, what is available. There may be frustration in the parents with slow progress or lack of progress or even a stable course without much improvement may be positive because the baby has not actually worsened in tone, hasn't gone downhill. So we have to start teaching the parents to look at the positive side of things. These are very stressful conditions, takes a lot of time and money. There may be depression, marital discord. Some parents give up their jobs to look after these children and some parents get frustrated and there is a risk of child abuse as well. So the key points in terms of managing such babies, very important, involve the family from the start. The moment you recognize in the NICU that there is a risk of neurodevelopmental problems, you start briefing them on what to expect, what kind of support is available. We have to be realistic, but we have to be positive, optimistic as far as possible. So a cautious optimism is what I described. So you shouldn't be negative because I told you that depression is one of the reasons that it affects uh, parents as well. So if you are uh, depressing them, they're not going to be in a state of mind to support the baby themselves. So you have to be realistic and positive at the same time. Functionality is actually more important than naming what the condition of the baby is. So you may have a mixed diagnosis, dystonia, tone abnormality, cerebral palsy, everything may overlap. So labeling it is less important than actually working out how to make it functional. The MRI scan and the correlation I described earlier. So don't treat the MRI, but treat the patient. MRI may be normal, baby may be abnormal. You need to still refer the baby to physiotherapy and other support. There is importance of regular feedback on the progress and the plan ahead. Parents may need to think of special alterations at home to support the developing child. They may need additional support like a nanny at home. They may need to support the siblings and the family emotionally and they should look after themselves. So the concept of respite is often uh, missed in our setups. In the Western setups, it's often stressed on. So it's very important to teach the parents that they do need respite. They need to de-stress to keep their emotional well-being as well. So in addition to focusing, they need to have some respite care where a relative or even a, a brief a period of foster care might help the child. So uh, it's very important that we support the family with all these. And some governments may give disability allowance and other benefits. So they have to be educated on these aspects as well. So uh, I hope this series was useful to you. And I request you to share with your friends and colleagues. Thank you.